How do you take a winning shot of a statue or a sculpture? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to try to do in this video. And the good news is you can find them all over the place, in the centre of town, in parks, in gardens, outside civic buildings, outside prominent buildings. And if you can't find any in those places, you can always have a look in your local graveyard and find one there. I've searched high and low throughout Lincoln to find all the statues I can to take pictures of. And that's exactly what we're going to have a look at. So let's have a look now. The problem with statues and sculptures is they don't move. They don't go up, they don't go down, they don't go left, they right, don't go right. Their heads don't move, they don't even smile. So you as a photographer has got to try to take a picture of the statue in its fixed position. And one of the challenges, you cannot control the light. And as an example, this statue behind me, it's got the light behind it and the whole sculpture is in shadow. And I'm going to try and take a picture of this sculpture with the light and the sculpture in shadow. And hopefully I can get a winning shot out of this sculpture. In this first image, I'm going to try and take uh, make use of this starburst coming out of these trees up here. I've gone for f20 to create that starburst effect during the day and i'm going to take this picture which is one stop underexposed and then i'm going to do a slightly overexposed image to get the lion exposed correctly i can stop making it turn to so get the lion exposed correctly and then the, the starburst in the back and i'll put a composite of these two images so here goes the first one i'm just focused straight on the lion two second timer and then what I'll do, I'll overexpose this slightly so that the lion is, is now in good, a good focus or good light. As, there it goes, the two second timer. So that should be much brighter as you saw on the back of camera there. I'll, we'll have a look at that in a, just in a second. We'll see how well that comes out. That's the first winning shot of a sculpture in the bag. Statues can also be located in less than easy to photograph locations, like in gardens behind fences that make it super difficult to get to and to photograph. One of the problems of taking photos of statues, especially notable people, is that they're often stuck up on a plinth and that makes them really challenging because they're high up and you can't easily get a good shot of them. But I think there are a couple of options to take a picture of a statue like this. The biggest challenge for this photo is because you've got your camera low, it means the base or, and the feet of the statue at the bottom look much, much bigger than the head. So ideally, what you want to do is try to get at eye level if you can one of the things you can do to try to get yourself up to eye level of a statue is to try and find a tree or climb up a fence or get on a bench or anything like that to get yourself up as high as you can to eye level of the statue and then take your photo and hopefully that will enable you to get a photo of the eye level of the statue and it will be a better quality image. The real option you're left to try to get a photo of the statue that's high up that you can't get a good eye level uh, image with is to take a picture of the statue looking up and try to crop in in some detail if you i'm not sure if you can see this but on this image i've got the pretty much a bust the head of the sh uh, the statue this chap called edward parker charlesworth and i'm just going to take the top of his as, as much as i can the top of his head what i might do is go back a bit and try to focus a bit further with a longer lens I've got my 45mm f1.8 on now and that's what I'm going to use I'm going to take this shot see what this looks like and I'm going to step back a bit and use a slightly longer telephoto lens let's just take this now we can have a look here it comes two second timer there it is so hopefully that's all right it's got lots of foliage around it it gives it lots of interest uh, but I still don't like that 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 branch that's sticking at the top
So far we've just looked at a couple of statues that are close by, but what happens when you can't get close to a statue and it's somewhere in the distance? Then you've got to be aware that if you take that shot, your statue then becomes a part of your image, not necessarily the focal point. And that's fine, you could do that really well, but you've just got to understand that's what you're going to get. If you are at a distance from your statue, then you need to bring other elements into your picture. Things beside it, things in the foreground and things in the background. To demonstrate this, I'm going to take a picture of that statue behind me using my 17mm lens. And on one side of my frame, I've got this tree. And on the other side, I've got that building with the light shining on it. And I'm just going to take this shot now, just see how it comes. But bear in mind, that statue, that sculpture is going to be sort of a fairly peripheral part, although it is going to be supposed to be my key subject. As I said earlier, you want to try to have your sculpture or statue at eye level. And if you are able to get an eye level shot, as I will be with this image, then I need to treat this statue as if it's a portrait and I'm taking a portrait in the studio. So when you take a picture of someone in the studio, you have a key light and you have a fill light and you do that to provide shadows on the face and contrast so that it doesn't look flat and bland. Like as that shot I took previously of the, the statue on the plinth, that was just bland picture with no contrast because I wasn't able to get a good light. So what you ideally want to do is get the right light and you because it's outdoors and you don't you can't impact the light you really want to make sure that the light is coming in from the side to provide a bit of shadow on the face and to, to provide that depth in the image unfortunately you might not be able to come and take that shot on the very moment that you're coming to get this image because this light might not be right so you may have to come back once twice more than a few times to get the right light obviously the best light you could get is golden hour and i'm nearly at midday here or, or it's getting close to midday so this isn't golden hour but it would be ideal if you could get that a nice orange glow and it would light this sculpture up perfectly but what i'll do with this sculpture i'll take it shot now and i'll try my best to doing it as a portrait i've got the 17 mil lens on now but i'll put the 45 in uh, to get it as a nice portrait shot. I decided to take one shot with my 17mm because I like the idea of getting uh, the whole of the statue in from top to bottom and I quite like the background as well. I think there's a, that's a quite a nice background. I might take a couple of different shots to get the right one. I've got F4. I've gone underexposed because of all the light on the brightness of the statue and uh, I am going to just take this shot. And I didn't have the two second timer on that time. But I've taken that shot and now I'll change lenses and try and do a portrait shot. I know you can't always have what you want and especially when it comes to light outdoors you have to just take what you're given. Uh, but one of the things that would be nice or one of the things i would want is a like from you and that i can have that because it's really simple and free and easy and you could just hit the like button that and make my day and if you have thank you very much you can take pictures of sculptures at night and this particular man with a hammer uh, I've seen taken at night and by other local photographers and I think it looks fantastic with the lines of traffic behind. It gives it a really, really nice background and you could do exactly the same thing at night with a statue if you've, if you've got one local that you can do it. Sculptures can be a little bit more tricky than statues mainly because if there's no particular focal point, there's no eye to the humanoid, it might make it a little bit more different or difficult to take the shot. So you might need to get really low and get a low shot rather than a, a perspective shot at eye level and try to do something slightly quirky, slightly different to, to obviously to bring out the features of that sculpture and try to bring it alive. Here I am trying to get as low as I can on this shot and I'm going for 
uh, one overexposed shot and I'm going to go for one underexposed shot and I'll, I'll merge those together and hopefully get a nice shot. Thank you very much indeed for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's been helpful, especially if you're likely to take part in a photography competition or an Instagram challenge that involves statues and sculptures. And I hope this video has just given you a little bit of an idea of sort of the content and the composition that you can go through to take pictures of sculptures and statues. I know it's not exhaustive and I know if it would be exhaustive, the video would be very long and boring, but I hope it just gives it a little bit of an idea of the sort of things that you can do outdoors, taking your shot of a statue or a sculpture. Once again, thank you very much indeed for watching. And if you do like these photography videos, then it would be amazing if you would subscribe to the channel. That would just make my day. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.